Hello, hello. I'm Dr. Isabelle Amig from Unabridged MD. Uh, and it is my pleasure to welcome you on the first episode of Unabridged MD for 2023. And first of all, Happy New Year. Uh, in this episode, I'm going to review a little bit the importance of achieving disease remission as fast as possible uh, when you have a rheumatologic disorder. Um, and let me get you why I was thinking of this topic uh, today. Uh, so there is a lot of news in my life. And one of them is that um, I've decided to step out of uh, uh, the institution that I was in. Uh, and I absolutely loved my time there. It uh, was more than five years. Uh, and I've been salaried my whole life. I've been in a world-class institute, whether it was in Paris, in Lyon, uh, in New York City, uh, Columbia University, as well as uh, in Denver, Colorado, where I was at National Jewish Health. And um, I decided to open my own direct care practice uh, because I realized that with the type of rheumatology practices that I want to um, practice, <laughs> uh, it makes more sense to have what we call direct care practice because I can really focus on the patient um, and I can make sure that all of my patients get the best of me. Uh, and that, um, unfortunately, I cannot do this uh, with insurances. And we're going to talk about this actually right now. Uh, and it's really sad for me because I'm actually French and I believe in that uh, health care is uh, right. Uh, and so it took a lot of thinking and a lot of time to actually uh, do this. Uh, but, but ultimately, I think that the value of offering this is really important. And uh, I, I actually think that the movement of direct care practice uh, has the potential of changing um, the way that we are practicing medicine so that our patients can actually really get the best. So uh, I really believe in this and uh, we can talk about uh, about it more. You heard Dr. Lola Achaye from uh, Direct Primary Care a Physician from Texas. You can listen to uh, that uh, episode if you want. Uh, but again, um, I think that that's a new way uh, to practice medicine and we're going to see more and more physician do this. And I'm one of them. I just joined the movement. And we can talk about this later. But today, the reason I'm uh, talking about disease remission and how, uh, why it's so important to achieve it um, and as fast as possible is that I was reflecting on the first month that I moved to Denver, Colorado. Uh, I was really honored to be part of a program that allowed us to get patients with rheumatoid arthritis as early as possible so that we could achieve remission faster and see if a program that could get our patients uh, with inflammatory arthritis as fast as possible could actually help us uh, get them um, get them to uh, disease remission faster and with um, uh, to, to get to remission, really, to have less pain and as fast as possible. Uh, the answer is yes, uh, but you will see there are some downfalls and drawback and uh, it's not as easy as it sounds. Um, so this project actually got uh, a lot of awards and uh, and I think that it's something that we can learn from, even though you will see there were some downfalls. So that's the first question. And... Um, I'm going to start with talking about rheumatoid arthritis, but you have to realize that it's actually for all rheumatologic conditions that are inflammatory. So if you have psoriatic arthritis, if you have ankylosing spondylitis, if you have um, uh, gout, any time uh, that we uh, that I'm going to talk about uh, rheumatoid arthritis disease remission, you can actually consider that it's, it's for all of those inflammatory disorders. Uh, and the reason is that they are inflammatory. It's just that there is a lot more evaluation disease, uh, of, uh, um, of rheumatoid arthritis. There's a lot more patients with rheumatoid arthritis. So there's a lot more money invested by pharmaceutical companies uh, and so more studies. Uh, but really, you can actually consider that it's the same for everyone. So what is disease remission? So disease remission is when you achieve um, no more pain, no more swelling, no more inflammation, no more morning stiffness, right? So this is how we define, we rheumatologists define 
when you have achieved disease remission. You know, in cancer, you actually have uh, blood work, you actually have a PET scan or CT scan, and that's how you look, right? Well, we don't really have uh, this in rheumatology, and so we're going to go with symptoms. Um, and so it's actually quite important to realize that sometimes you may not feel that you have pain, but there is some swelling. And this is where sometimes it's quite important to have some ultrasound uh, to evaluate and see if there is any, uh, any ongoing inflammation. Um, some people do x-rays as well on a regular basis, but the truth is that x-rays, it, we would see an erosion, a destruction of the joint. It's already too late. So you don't want to wait for this. But this is disease remission for the purpose of this talk. You're going to hear that it's basically when you have achieved no more pain, no more pain one, no more swelling two, and no more morning stiffness. Okay. Um, so why is it important to achieve disease remission? Uh, and as, as fast as possible. So one, why is it important to achieve disease remission? Well, the first one, and that's what the patients are going to tell us, right, is that you have no more pain. So you can actually function. Uh, you have no more fatigue because the inflammation causes fatigue and you can live a full life. But that's not only the reason why you want to achieve disease remission. Another reason is that the inflammation that you see in the joint that causes pain actually also causes inflammation of other organs of your body. So for example, your heart is also inflamed when you have rheumatoid arthritis. I was part of a study at Columbia University and we published this. Uh, and I, I think I was the first author or second author in one and the second author in second one. But anyway, the, the most important thing here is that there was what we found is that patients who had rheumatoid arthritis, even those who did not have any cardiovascular uh, disease. So we didn't know that they had cardiovascular disease. When we looked at their heart, we could see inflammation. And what was even more interesting is that if you were treating the rheumatoid arthritis, you would see that the inflammation had decreased in, at the level of the heart. And that was in patients that had no symptoms whatsoever of heart disorder. We also saw that patients with rheumatoid arthritis had more, uh, more disease of their uh, vascular, uh, vascular disease, right? So their vessel were uh, more affected. And we know that that causes hypertension. And we know that that can cause what we call diastolic heart failure, but heart failure, basically. And uh, that is one of the reasons why we can actually link now rheumatoid arthritis to cardiovascular disorders. OK, so when you're trying to achieve disease remission, you're not just doing it for your joint. You're doing it for your heart. You also are doing it for your lungs. You're doing it for your skin. You're doing it for your eyes. You're really doing it for your whole body, right? Uh, in the past, uh, so fortunately, we don't see this that often, but in the past, when I started rheumatoid, uh, rheumatology, so that's now a long time ago, uh, in the 1990s, right? So when I started rheumatology, our patients used to have a lot more cancer. And that was because their rheumatoid arthritis were much more severe than they are now. Uh, and we know now that inflammation causes cancer, right? So we know that there is an association between cancer and inflammation. So when, again, that's another reason why you want to make sure that you achieve disease remission, okay? So you want to decrease the inflammation because inflammation causes bad outcome for your, for your health. So now that you understand this, uh, um, you understand that it's really important to explain, to tell your doctors when you think that you have pain, when you have, pain, you have swelling, when you think that you still have morning stiffness. Um, there is one thing that uh, we have to remember is that you should not settle for a little bit better or better. You should not settle for better. You should settle for close to perfection, if not perfection. Why is that important? Because disease remission, really, and I tell this to my patient, I say, you have the right to have one tender or swollen joint. That's it. If you have more than that, we're changing treatment until we get to the perfect treatment. Why is this important? Because, one, we have many treatments nowadays. And because we have many treatments, we have even more 
many combinations of treatment, combinations of treatment, okay? And the second thing is that even though you're better, you still have ongoing inflammation if you're not in disease remission. So please get to perfection or close to perfection. Don't settle for just better, okay? So that's very important. Um, and then the last thing that I want you to know is the fact that um, you should try to aim and we should all try to aim to achieve disease remission as fast as possible. So why, what do I mean by that? Is that there is something called window of opportunity, uh, which is that uh, when you're at the beginning of a disorder, when you start developing some joint pain, at the beginning, and that we are going to ultimately make a diagnosis of, for example, rheumatoid arthritis, okay? When you're at that beginning, you don't have yet damages. And we're not just talking about damages to your joint. We're talking damages to your whole body. Again, lungs, uh, again, uh, cardiovascular system, heart, uh, but like skin, et cetera, et cetera, right? Or just ongoing blood, right? And uh, the other thing that uh, we are studying and we are finding uh, through science now is that patients who are um, achieving disease remission earlier, so meaning that if you have what we call early rheumatoid arthritis and that we can treat this at that moment, if you achieve disease remission, you can actually go into full remission. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that you may never need treatment more than you know a couple of treatments here and there uh like so you you would have treatment we would put you in remission and it is possible for you to not need treatment forever right that's the first thing the second thing is that uh, you may not need to change treatment as often as some other people and that uh, finally we would achieve disease remission faster for you okay so that is all of those are really important now, let's talk about the study that we were doing uh, uh, when, I, when I moved to Denver. So what we were doing is that we were, uh, uh, because we had a grant, we were able to open some slots of uh, emergency for patients, right? So we had partnered uh, with um, some primary care physicians' offices where we basically told them, hey, look, if you have a patient that has inflammation, I mean, inflammatory arthritis, we would like to see them and we would get them in within two weeks, okay? And then we would uh, have those uh, open slots and we would be able to see them and uh, then we would decide if they had early rheumatoid arthritis. What we found is that we were able to uh, get them to disease remission much faster, and those patients indeed did much better than other patients that had to wait. You know, on average, I think you have to wait four to six months right now to see a rheumatologist in the Denver area, and uh, in some other areas of Colorado, I think it's eight months, and some uh, other areas in the country can be nine months. Okay, uh, so. Uh, uh, what we found was that, right, that uh, there was better outcome if you were seen earlier. The issue is that once the program was finished, once uh, the funding went away, we couldn't leave uh, those slots open because if you leave those slots open and there is no inflammatory arthritis patients that are using them, well, you are not seeing patients. If you're not seeing patients, you're not being paid by insurances, right? Um, and that became a problem. So then the institution rightfully is like, well, we cannot uh, open those. Uh, and so what did we do? We went back to where we were before, which is that when uh, you get to see patients as they come and that there is no way to really like uh, uh, see who's coming uh, in, a, in advance. So you don't really see. I mean, I was trying to see like who would uh, be qualifying as uh, early rheumatoid arthritis, but it uh, ended up not being possible because you cannot move someone that has an appointment that they have been waiting for six months. Right. So that was not possible. So ultimately, this program was successful as long as we had the um, grant. But then after that, it was not successful. And that's really painful as a rheumatologist to see that there is something that we can do and that we were not able to do. So, you know, we were not able to do a long term. Um, what, why am I sharing this with you today? One, because I think that it's really important for you to realize that when we're talking about inflammatory arthritis, we're not just talking about 
uh, your joint pain, right? So it's, we're talking about an inflammation that's really going all over your body. So that's number one. Number two, I want you to invest in your health. Why do I say this? Well, look, I'm going to give you my example. Uh, when I had cancer, I decided that I was going to take every single part of my life and figure out how I could help my body. I did not look at my body with like anger or being upset about it. I mean, yeah, of course, sometimes I was feeling sorry for myself, but really I wasn't in that mood. What I was learning, I was learning and I was trying to help my body as much as I could and my mind really also. And I uh, did not look at the expense. I looked at my budget and I was like, okay, this is how much I can put. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll be honest, I did not put any money for my 401k at that time. I was like, well, look, I'm not even sure I'm going to be able to use that. So what's the point, right? Uh, and so I invested in my health. And I can tell you that my oncologist, as well as all of the people that were around me to help me, were blown away by how good I responded to everything that I did. What I mean by that is that it not only helped me heal from my cancer, but it also allowed me to have a full life where I was completely hopeful and where I knew that I was doing everything that was in my power to get to a better body, to, to feel better mentally, spiritually, and in my body. Uh, so that, you know, whatever would happen, I had done everything that I could. It, uh, you know, I come from France. We don't spend money. Like health is free in France. And so to spend that kind of money was a, a leap for me. But I can tell you that I never, ever regretted it. And to this day, I feel so grateful that I had this uh, a moment of, of uh, realization that this is, I have one body, it's right now, I need to take care of it. And I have one mind, it's right now, and I need to take care of it. And if I want to uh, come out of this cancer uh, story, I need to take care of myself from all aspects of myself. Uh, so if I could do it, I want to say you can do it too. Um, and you can work with a rheumatologist that's uh, available. So you can find someone, if you're not in Colorado, uh, find someone that has a less of a, a waiting time period. And if you are in Colorado, I offer this to you right now because I'm finally opening my doors to unabridged MD in rheumatology. And it is direct care. And direct care means that I'm here for you because I don't go for insurance except when it comes to medication and lab if you want to, but really the relationship is with you for a really uh, set cost that is absolutely worth the investment. So you can, we can talk about this if you want. You can basically uh, email me at onabridgedmd at gmail.com and we'll, uh, we'll give you all the information about this. So onabridgedmd at gmail.com. But even if it's not me, invest in your health and go and see a rheumatologist that can get you to disease remission and do not settle for just better. You need to settle for close to perfection, because you can attain the life that you deserve to live. And I really believe in this. Um, and as a physician scientist, I can tell you it is possible. <laughs> and you just have to look at all of the reviews out there under my name, and you will see that I get my patients there because it's possible. <laughs> and I love rheumatology for that reason, because we can get to close to perfection, if not perfection. All right. So that's it for today. I wish you the best 2023, the best year. It's your year and uh, it's hope driven by science again, because there is science, but I want you to have hope that you can live the best life, the life that you are deserving to live. And I will see you next week. And again, if you want to work with me, we are open for business and I'm so excited to work with you. And you can join us at onabridgemd.com, uh, fill the contact form, or you can just email us at onabridgemd at gmail.com. And we will be delighted to see you. Have a wonderful day and take care and see you next week. Bye-bye.